The American College Health Association survey, which goes out to college students across the country, uh, asks students how, how many times or how often they seek counseling on their own. And we know that uh, some students do, do so. They do feel comfortable. They do know where those services exist. But a large proportion, about 28%, say that they have not and don't plan to use their counseling services. But something like 6 out of 10 who are experiencing difficulty actually won't come to the counseling center. Uh, so peer support programs are, are, they've been in existence for a long time, but they're cropping up with in, um, increased frequency to kind of take the counseling center and reach out to more and more students. Crimson Core, the core actually was an acronym we created in the first few weeks, um, and it stands for Caring, Open-Minded, Respectful, Peer Support. And I feel like that really encapsulates um, our mission and what we're about on our campus. I feel like if someone, maybe in one of my chemistry classes, they have seen, maybe even if they don't even know my name, they've seen me before. They know that I'm in this class with them, I'm probably in their grade. I'm going through a lot of the same struggles as they are, and so they know for sure that I can relate to them and what they're going through. They're going to choose me more so over someone who is, you know, 35 years old and works as a counselor at CAPS. And even if, I mean, I'm not a psychologist or a counselor or anything, but what I can do is be that middleman that can tell them, you know, I think you, you might want to look into going to CAPS. Our members aren't counselors, and we obviously don't have the proper training to claim we are. So it's great that we have supervisors that are actual psychologists, actual social workers, and whenever we do come across certain problems and issues, we always refer to them. Usually in the spring semester, we offer applications, and last the first year that we offered it, we had over 200 IU students apply to be members. We do our initial training, which involves things like ethics, confidentiality, resources on campus, um, and some very basic active listening skills. And then when students return to campus in the fall semester, we start getting into some of the more specifics of college student mental health. As a member of Crimson Corps, we do a lot of outreach just because our organization is so new right now. Um, we work a lot with the IUSA, we're doing Culture of Care Week. Generally people see us as people who are, you know, there if someone needs to talk or if someone needs more information about uh, counseling and psychological services. But we also help other organizations on campus. A lot of our events are kind of in conjunction with CAPS also, so when they have Celebrate Everybody Week and when they have uh, De-Stress Fest, you know, we help out. We're the people who, who get the word out there and we, um, we also educate people about mental health in that sense. Some of the educational events that we participate in are things like uh, the IU Health Fair, which happens every year, Welcome Week activities, uh, depression screenings, uh, sex, drugs, and rock and roll, uh, de-stress events at Wells Library. We did a October Fest to pair with a tailgate last our fall. Goal, our overall goal with Crimson Corps is to start changing the culture of um, college student mental health. We want, the, we want students on this campus and everywhere to start talking about the topic. There's a movement on campus called Culture of Care that's coming out of the Dean's Office and out of the IUSA. And uh, Crimson Corps started right around the same time as that. So I feel like there's some energy on campus for us all to be um, a little more responsive to each other, more caring, and take more responsibility for everybody's well-being. With this peer-to-peer -peer support group, it really allows um, students to get sort of on the ground and be supportive in mental health awareness. Crimson Corps really changes your perspective because you learn how to, to genuinely care for people, even though you might already genuinely care about people, but you learn how to put that into, into a more effective form of, of caring for people. Working in Crimson Corps has helped me a lot in my personal life and also my academic life. Um, it's taught me how to be an active listener with my peers and my friends first, as well as it's helped me build these skills that I can use for my professional life, for working with other people, counseling them, and doing other types of therapy. Uh, for someone who wants to speak to a Crimson Corps member, they can also check out IU, uh, IU Health Center website, which is the CAPS website, and the Crimson Corps webpage to learn uh, more about our members. Each member has a bio listed, and there's also um, ways to contact individual members or leaders. Again, we want to reiterate to students that it's not meant to be a counseling type process. It's not that you're contacting a Crimson Corps member to set up an appointment. Um, but if you wanted to ask questions about the program and how to be involved, that's one way to, to initiate contact with them. And another way is to look for the Crimson Corps members wearing their Crimson Corps gear.
on campus. They all have bright red sweatshirts and t-shirts and bag tags. So if you look around, uh, you'll see one walking by. It's definitely a good buffer type of approach than scheduling an appointment with a counselor. Um, I think it takes away from the stigma and I think it's a nice starting point. And one of the best things that we do is refer people to the IU Health Center in CAPS. I think one of our main goals is to help ease our peers into knowing that they can talk to anyone about their problems and hopefully they can take that and go to the health center and talk to a professional. Mm -hmm.